course, you know, when you think of a sea monster, it's a typical dragon type thing, you know, and, you know, just like Hugo Katie, you know, or rather a Loch Ness monster, you know. There's, yep. there's the shadowy type pictures of that. covering uh, two, almost 200 years of history of the lake uh, where there have been different sightings of a sea serpent or sea monster mm -hmm. as they're uh, like Loch Ness. As we were cruising along in this rather sort of a dusk atmosphere, one yeah. night, and it wasn't quite day, it was in between. A thick air. And I saw this big log in front of the boat as mm -hmm. we were speeding along, and I could visualize hitting it with the boat and wrecking it. <laughs> so my buddy was driving, and I told him to chop the throttle, he said, yeah. slow it down, and, and he did. But we were going fast enough where it didn't slow down, we kind of went over this log. Okay. And you know, it was a, it was a type of thing where you saw this you know undulation, this this thing up and down in yeah. the water, you know. And as we passed over it, this is all true. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, uh, as we passed over it, we looked from left to right, waiting to smash into the, the log, and yeah. all of, we saw the water sort of riling on, on both sides of the boat. So whatever this this critter went down underwater, was, the pressure of pushing yeah, down, and uh, you know avoided us. Of course, a log wouldn't do that. No a log would let you hit it. Doesn't have fins. And no, and we're looking around for birds. We're looking around for something that could have created that turbulence in the water. Yeah, we couldn't find anything. But our our serpent just kind of dropped down and disappeared on this water. And, and then we we're all looking at each other. And says, Yuga Katie. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about what I know and how it came about, and that is I'm very involved with um, education on the lake, and I run a research vessel that, that's out on the lake every day. And uh, part of the impetus for my research vessel was people that went before me. So I've done a bunch of research on the lake, and I also run... Um, narrated tours for visitors and locals alike and try to give them some cultural and natural history background of the area. Nice. And in, in researching information for that, I, I've come across various stories covering uh, two, almost 200 years of history of the lake uh, where there have been different sightings of a sea serpent or sea monster mm -hmm. as they're well, like Loch Ness. And, um, there's been articles written, um, cited in the Ithaca Journal from 1897 that reference 69th annual sighting of Old Greeny on the lake. Wow. Um, pretty amazing that, you know, starting in the 1820s, when we were first connected to the Erie Canal was 1828. Okay. And that would be about the year of the first annual. So they opened this up to a pathway to the ocean. Okay. And it, from that year on, they started seeing sightings of these serpent-like, very large creatures, 30 feet, 35 feet long kind of thing. Oh, wow. And the Ethica Journal reported on this some 68 years later in an 1897 article about serpents. And there have been various sightings through time since then. And although spending nearly every day on the lake for six months of the year, I have never sighted a serpent myself. Um, I have repeated the stories that I know about it many times, and I've had occasion to be sitting in the middle of the lake on a boat with the engine shut off, just relaxing. Now, out in the middle of the lake, two miles from shore, with not a boat in sight for two hours, all of a sudden I will notice a large ripple or small wave coming right across the lake at me and it's they range from six to twelve inches high and any number of different lengths i've seen 
the wave inclusive of. Yeah, but, so something's in but there. very long, yep. and it's a disturbance that comes from underneath, obviously, and creates that wave. Ripple off. I'm talking about a situation where there's no wind, yep. there are no boats, no traffic, no wave. No movement. No movement at all on the lake, dead flat calm, and here comes this foot-high wave rolling across <laughs> the lake. And it's been many more times than one that I've witnessed this phenomena yep. and looked around for an expl explanation. I witnessed it alone, I've witnessed it on cruises with other people while we're doing water sampling in the yep. lake where we've got the boat shut off, we're up by Aurora, we're in the widest part of the lake, yep. dead calm. We've been out there for 45 minutes doing plankton samples and things out of the lake yep. and here comes this wave and I'm like, does everybody see what's coming at us? Where did it come from? Nobody has an answer. Nobody has any answer for that. And and as much science as I know about the lake and about underground or underwater uh, wave action and so forth, yep. nobody has ever explained to me how this wave could form at the t at the surface of the lake. So yeah, you know, conjecture is it was it could be formed by something very large from underneath it. Yeah, broke the surface of the water.